Welcome and thank you for joining us for our family heirloom preservation clinic. I am Euclid Rosales Lutzi, a library technical assistant here at the Preservation and Conservation Laboratory, Heritage Library Division, NALIS. As we begin, I would like to introduce to you one of the facilitators, Ms. Danielle Fraser. Danielle Fraser has served as the library conservator and the head of the Preservation and Conservation Laboratory Heritage Library Division, NALIS, since 2009. Danielle holds a Master of Science in Information Studies and a Certification of Advanced Studies in Conservation of Library and Arcad Austin. She was a 2008 Conservation Fellow of the Library of Congress, Washington Institute for Conservation and Library Association of Trinidad and Tobago. Danielle enjoyed presenting papers at the annual meetings of regional association, including Acryl and Caral. I know she is looking forward to presenting at today's webinar. Across to you, Danielle. Thank you so very much, Euclid. Welcome everyone. Before we get into the care of our family heirlooms, let me introduce you to our institution, the National Library and Information System Authority of Trinidad and Tobago, or NALIS as, is it, as it is called, is the country's coordinator of all library and information services. Beyond the Heritage Library of which we are part, there are over 25 public libraries, three in correctional institutions, libraries in secondary and primary schools, and special libraries in several government agencies, all administered by NALIS. I encourage you to visit our website, www.nalis.gov.tt, for more information about our services. One of NALIS's key responsibilities is to promote and preserve national heritage information. Though the National Library has a comprehensive collection of paper-based items and electronic audiovisual media, there's a particular emphasis on materials with national and Caribbean origin, focus, and authorship. The Heritage Library Division, which is located on the second floor of the National Library Building in Port of Spain, Trinidad, helps NALIS fulfill the goal of acquiring, promoting, and preserving national heritage information. Some special collections acquired or donated to the Heritage Library Division consist of mainly traditional library items created by or of interest to a significant person or organization of Trinidad and Tobago. You wouldn't be surprised if you found within these collections books, newspapers, pamphlets, photographs, letters, maps. We also have film and audio recordings. However, within several of the collections housed in the Rare Book Room of the National Library, there's an eclectic mix of items often labeled memorabilia. So in a sense, we are focused on the preservation of the collective heirlooms of our Trinbegonian family. The Preservation and Conservation Laboratory is responsible for ensuring the overall longevity of library materials. With attention to the Heritage Library Division and its collection of historical importance. The Park Lab, which was officially commissioned in July 2013, helps NALIS fulfill its role as the IFLA Federation of Library Associations and Institutions Preservation and Conservation, IFLA PAC, Regional Center for the English-Speaking Caribbean. Additionally, this arm of the Heritage Library Division advises public and private organizations on the care of their collections and artifacts. The PAC Lab has been serving the preservation and conservation needs of clients through fumigation, freeze drying, conservation treatments, collection repair, bindery services, 
disaster recovery, technical assistance, and preservation training. While we do miss carrying out our preservation training sessions in person, we are happy that, the, that technology allows us to continue this mission through our preservation webinar series, which starts today with this session. Let me formally introduce you to my co-facilitator, Mrs. Euclid Rosales Uxi. Euclid started as a printing operator one in 2006 in the binary department of NALIS. She holds a grade A certification in book binding and print finishing from Metal Industries Company Limited, MIC. With her experience in dealing with restoration of books, she was then promoted to library technical assistance of the PAC Lab in 2019. Following my guidance and training, I have been happy to see Euclid specialize in insect extermination, mold remediation, and conservation techniques. With her training, she has successfully executed conservation treatment for various exhibitions and collections. Euclid enjoys training library staff and the public in preservation and conservation workshops. So I know she's looking forward to sharing about caring for your family heirlooms. Over to you, Euclid. Thank you, Daniel. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome again to our webinar. Today, we'll be discussing one particular agent of deterioration, pests. Consider that agents of deterioration can be environmental or biological agents, and deterioration can be caused by the human factor or natural disaster. Preservation is about understanding the 10 primary threats to our collections and taking the steps to detect it, block it, report it, and treat the damage they cause. These 10 agents of deterioration are physical forces, fire, water, criminals, pests, contaminants, light and ultraviolet radiation, incorrect temperature, incorrect relative humidity, and neglect. Knowing what the agents of deteriorations are and preventing them is important for our collections, whether at an institution or at home, so that you can preserve these treasures for future generations. Though there are numerous types of pests that can be damaging to our family heirlooms, only a few species are commonly seen in the Caribbean and are featured in this presentation. So what is eating your collection? There are over 3,500 types of cockroaches. However, four types are associated with the damage of paper-based materials. The most common ones are these, the American cockroach, Australian cockroach, the Oriental cockroach, and the German cockroach. Now, all four, all four species of cockroaches mentioned have large mouthparts and are fond of starchy materials and proteins. They would eat book pages, binding clothes, adhesives, and even leathers. Cockroach damage can be recognized by multiple light patches on book cloth surfaces and ragged edges on paper leaves. Cockroach droppings can also be spotted in the form of pellets. Another is the drugstore beetle. The larva of the drugstore beetle is often referred to as bookworms. These tiny beetles can be very damaging to your materials. Its strong chewing mandibles can bore into books through plastics and even through thin layers of aluminum foil. Often the larva tunnels all the way through adjacent books from cover to cover before being detected. So look for the fine powder-like frass left behind after their feeding. It's usually the color of the paper or the board that the beetle had consumed. And our final pest is the silverfish. Silverfish, just like the cockroach, are particularly fond of starch and items containing starch. They feed on paper sizing and textiles primarily rayon, cotton, and linen. Their damage is usually characterized by ragged scrapes, 
ed areas and irregular holes. Because of their small flat shape, it makes it easier for them to be concealed in cardboard boxes and other items brought into a building. They love dark, humid areas that are undisturbed for long periods of time. Also, a yellow, yellow staining can be visible around the area that the silverfish damage. So now some preservation practices that we use here at NALIS. So oftentimes storage conditions of newly acquired heritage collections are unknown to us. So to ensure that pests are not brought into the library, all incoming collections are insect exterminated. At NALIS, we use control low temperatures, treatment or freezing to help eradicate insects in our collections. And we do this by using our way to book dryer and insect exterminator freezer which is an electrically and mechanically reconfigured commercial freezer, which uses low control temperatures to kill insects without using fumigating chemicals. Now this freezing happens very quickly to guard against the insects acclimatizing to the cold temperatures and hibernating during the process. These sub-zero temperatures cause their body fluids to crystallize and that is what kills them. So now that I have given you tips on how we can deal with insects affecting our heirloom, Daniel will now get, continue giving you preservation tips that you can use at home. Over to you, Daniel. Thank you so much, Euclid. Now with a bit of thought and a small amount of effort, these collections can be preserved and protected while at home. Now remember the best defense against insects is to monitor and manage the conditions which encourage them to flourish. We can make our collections pest-free by engaging in activities which create inhospitable conditions for them. So for instance, are your windows and doors tightly sealed? What about the openings around the drains and holes and electrical cables, etc.? Remember, insects thrive between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius and humidity levels between 60 to 80 percentage RH. So maintaining a cool and dry climate is going to be important to ensuring that you keep insects out. And what about water sources near your collection items? Do you regularly inspect the pipes? and other sources of water in restrooms, kitchens, near to air conditioning equipment, et cetera. And you want to be sure that you're keeping food sources away from collection areas. Cleanup should be done immediately whenever you're preparing or dealing with food and be sure that food is stored in tightly sealed containers or refrigerated. And housekeeping is going to be one of the key things you should do. Collection areas should be cleaned routinely and thoroughly at least every six months. The thing about cleaning is that dust provides an ideal habitat and food source for insects. Regular cleaning and inspection allows you to look for signs and insect activity. Now, what happens if you do see some insects within your collection? There are various methods used to eradicate pests. However, each method has a differing degree of success. One thing you should note is that chemical pesticides can cause irreversible damage to your collections. The remnants of the chemicals that you use after treatment can be toxic to persons accessing collection items and spaces. So what you would want to do is to be sure that you isolate the item and bag them. Isolating ensures that the item is quarantined from your collection and that is not being affected, um, not affecting items that might be adjacent to it. And by bagging the item, we can be sure that we contain any insects and that they are not um, moving themselves from our collection item. 
you want to also treat and clean the item. Um, and by doing that, there's actually one way of dealing with the insects that I want to talk about. Household chest freezers, which reach and maintain a minus 20 degrees, can be very effective in dealing with insects. However, note that they should not have that auto defrost cycle. Now to avoid the damage from the ice buildup on the object in a regular freezer and to protect it from co condensation when you're removing the item, the item should be stored in a plastic bag, not put directly into the freezer. Be sure it's a resealable plastic bag that can then be secured with some tape. Be sure to use some tape that will not fail in the low temperatures. If there are a number of items being treated at once, the item should be bagged and then put into trays or boxes to allow you to handle them easily. The freezer should not be dirty and you should not have food near to the items because this can cause contamination in the event of a power failure. You should keep the item frozen in this way for a minimum of two weeks. Do you remember when Euclid spoke about the hibernation of insects? Keeping them frozen at this temperature ensures that the insects do not survive the cold temperature by hibernating. Now, when you remove them from the freezer, objects should be allowed to acclimate to room temperature while they're still completely wrapped and then leave the item at room temperature for at least 24 hours. This allows you to inspect the items through the plastic bag to see if you still are seeing insects at all and also to allow the item to slowly return to room temperature. Now, because many materials become temporarily brittle at low temperatures, you should minimize the amount that you're handling while the item is returning to room temperature. Now, just a word of caution as it relates to freezing though. Generally, most objects that are made of organic materials, such as textiles, paper, wood, and leather, are all able to be safely frozen. However, there are some materials that should not be frozen. So for instance, very fragile items, which may be broken in the process, do not put paintings or painted materials, objects that are under tension, for example, drums or musical instruments, lacquered or inlaid wooden objects, rubber, plastic and wax, glass, old photographs, audiovisual material and glossy paper like magazines should not be frozen. Now we've come to the end of speaking about dealing with insects. So I thank you for attending this month's Family Heirloom Preservation Clinic and feel free to put your questions in the chat. We have another member of our team, Mr. Kareem D'Souza, Library Technical Assistant, who is helping to moderate the chat. Any questions there, Kareem? Great. So we invite you to join us at our clinic next month where we explore another agent of deterioration. This time we're going to look at light and UV. Also be sure to register for our upcoming webinars, Introduction to the Care of Photographs, which will be on Wednesday, March the 8th at 1 p.m. local time. We will explore the structure, handling, storage, and display of photographs. We hope the theory and techniques highlighted will help you keep your photographs for many generations to come. Also, join us on April 14th at 1 p.m. local time for the webinar dealing with mold. We'll share measures to prevent mold growth and the actions you should take should mold occur within your library and archival collections. We hope to see you soon. Thank you.